So we have looked at the genetic code. We have looked at the ribosome. Now the next question is what is transfer RNA? Now there is one transfer RNA for each amino acid and shown in a, not in a very big zoom over here. And uh, each transfer RNA has the ability to charge an amino acid. And what charging means is shown over here. Basically, this is a tRNA and a tRNA can be hooked up to an amino acid shown over here, okay, through a high energy ester bond. So for each amino acid, there will be a tRNA which can specifically charge to that amino acid with a relationship with the uh, anticodon sh shown over here. And for example, uh, for uh, this should be tyrosine. And for tyrosine, uh, the code is AAA. Now there is an enzyme called as an amino acid tRNA synthetase, which is a protein which works to take the amino acid, phenylalanine, not tyrosine, and uh, hook it up to uh, partner tRNA, okay? So the charging function, the chemical reaction between the amino acid to the tRNA is done by amino acid tRNA synthetase. There is one amino acid tRNA synthetase for each amino acid. There is one tRNA for each amino acid. Amino acid tRNA synthetase hook these two up together, which is the charging step. And once these are hooked up together, the tRNA moves to the ribosome and on the mRNA with the help of the ribosome, it basically looks for the codon. And on one side of the tRNA is the anticodon. And once the codon anticodon compatibility is met, the amino acid is then presented to the ribosome for uh, ligating to the next amino acid. All right. Is this clear? Are there questions from this slide? Uh, sir, can you please explain this again? Okay. Yes, sir. I don't understand. So, so the goal is that in proteosynthesis, you need the transfer RNA to take an amino acid to the ribosome. Okay. There are 20 type of transfer RNAs. Each transfer RNA is specific for one amino acid. And shown over here is the chemical complex of a tRNA over here and a amino acid over here, which is tyrosine and they are connected by a high energy ester bond. Now, this tRNA has on one side the amino acid on the top, and at the bottom, it has three nucleotides, which are therefore recognizing the uh, complementary uh, nucleotides on the mRNA, okay? So remember on mRNA, you don't have TTT, you have UUU, okay? So this AAA, instead of recognizing TTT, recognizes UUU on the mRNA. Now, since there are 20, transfer RNAs and there are 20 amino acids, there is a pairing. You can only have the same transfer RNA with that uh, anticodon uh, triplet nucleotide for each amino acid. Now, the conjugation of these two is carried out by an enzyme called the amino acid tRNA synthetase. And again, rather than having a single amino acid tRNA synthetase, there are 20 amino acid tRNA synthetases which do this function. So 20 enzymes pair one amino acid to one tRNA and once this complex is formed, it moves to the ribosome. So let's not uh, continue here. I'll go ahead, show you uh, the whole process again, and let's see if you still have questions, okay? Let me just go ahead and uh, let's see if you still have questions. I'll show you the entire process, okay? Now, this is what a transfer RNA looks like. A transfer RNA, uh, remember, Holly uh, did a, a lot of work in terms of defining what a transfer RNA is, and he and his group actually identified all the transfer RNAs in the cell. Now the transfer RNA is a piece of RNA, we are calling it tRNA, which is approximately 70 to 80 nucleotides in length, and it folds into a very classic clover leaf structure, okay? And uh, this was also a major discovery. One end of the transfer RNA has the anticodon three bases, which will recognize the codon on the mRNA. And this, as you can see, is in the middle of the RNA strand. So this is, a, this is basically a straight mRNA strand which folds into a clover leaf structure. This is where the three bases are, which are going to basically be formed the anticodon. And here at the three prime or the five prime end is where the amino acid is going to be attached. And the rest of the structure is important for stability and for recognition. And I will not go into what it recognizes at this point. And this is a sort of a schematic, which is an L-shaped, an inverse l shape of the transfer RNA with the amino acid being over here and the anticodon loop being over here. So let's go over this whole process again. I will show you the movie again. Translation is the second stage of protein synthesis where a piece of mRNA is used to create a polypeptide chain. Firstly, let's go over the key terms. Remember that mRNA or messenger RNA is made up of codons. tRNA or transfer RNA has an anticodon on it and the anticodon defines the amino acid carried by the tRNA. Translation takes place in the cytoplasm, and the first thing that happens is that the ribosome attaches to the mRNA at the start codon, which is AUG. 
the ribosome is made up of ribosomal RNA, rRNA, and ribosomal protein, and has two sites on it, the P site and the A site. A tRNA carrying the complementary anticodon to the start codon, which is always AUG, comes and attaches in the P site. The first amino acid associated with this is always methionine. A piece of tRNA having an anticodon complementary to the mRNA second codon then floats in from the cytoplasm carrying the next specific amino acid. In this case, that's tyrosine, and this tRNA then attaches in the A site. A peptide bond is then formed between the first two amino acids. At this point, the tRNA that's in the P site, or you might want to think of that like the parking site, is no longer really required because its amino acid is attached to the amino acid on the second tRNA by the covalent peptide bond. The ribosome then moves along the mRNA by one codon. This places the second tRNA in the P site, and the first tRNA is then free to break away. While it does so, a new tRNA with an anticodon matching the mRNA's codon and carrying a specific amino acid can then come and join in the A site that's been freed up. So hopefully with this movie, which is a simplistic explanation of the core process of ligation of different amino acids, the definition of what the ribosome is of having two subunits with the mRNA moving in between the two subunits in one direction. The fact that there are defined sites in this large structure where events are going on, and the fact that amino acids are brought in by the tRNA, anticodon end of the tRNA recognizes the codon on the mRNA. That amino acid is then ligated to the next amino acid, and this whole process happens in sequence. The fact that you understand what the relationship between the codes and the amino acids is, which is the genetic code, the fact that you understand what tRNAs are, which is shown over here, and there are 20 tRNAs each charged to amino acid. And this charging step, this connective chemical connectivity is done by, by an enzyme called amino acid tRNA synthetase, again, one for every amino acid. And you have a broad idea of what the tRNA structure is, which is a clover leaf structure. And remember, there is a tRNA with an anticodon, one each for each amino acid. So there are 20 of them, and they all function together with the ribosome to make protein. Let me now sort of end this part by, by showing you a higher resolution structure from the protein data bank. There is the mRNA on the right, there is a tRNA on the left, and the tRNA will have these three anticodons, and the mRNA will have the codons. And you can see Watson-Crick hydrogen bonding between the codon and the anticodon. This zoomed in structure is very important because if this recognition works, then the tRNA is carrying an amino acid, which is related to the codon on the mRNA. And this amino acid will then be ligated to the next amino acid based on the code on the mRNA. One additional point I would like to leave you with is that the third base, as we know, has a wobble. It's flexible. And you will ask, how is it that all three are Watson-Crick base pairs? All three are uh, nucleotides. How is it that the third has a bit of a wobble and the first two don't? The first two, you can't have any flexibility. The reason is very pretty much to do with the ribosomal structure. Remember this this whole recognition is surrounded by the ribosome and the ribosome sort of tweaks the third base for the codon anticodon recognition side, allowing more flexibility. And this is part of the biological process. And we don't really understand why this is true only for the third codon. So I'll now show you a final movie and then I'll end and take questions. The job of this mRNA is to carry the gene's message from the DNA out of the nucleus to a ribosome for production of the particular protein that this gene codes for. There can be several million ribosomes in a typical eukaryotic cell. These complex catalytic machines use the mRNA copy of the genetic... So again, very obvious. You can see that the, either the mRNA is moving or the ribosome is moving. Probably the mRNA because the ribosome is really a huge machine. And sometimes it's sitting on the endoplasmic reticulum. You can see like a ticker tape, the mRNA, which is very huge, is moving through the ribosome. And there's obviously a large tunnel in the ribosome through which it is moving. And at the bottom is the small subunit, at the top is the large subunit. And you can see coming out in red, the amino acids which have been ligated together based on the unique sequence which this particular mRNA carries. And the unique sequence which this mRNA carries is because of the unique sequence on the DNA from which this mRNA was copied. These complex catalytic machines use the mRNA copy of the genetic information to assemble amino acid building blocks into the three-dimensional proteins that are essential for life. Let's see how it works.
The ribosome is composed of one large and one small subunit that assemble around the messenger RNA, which then passes through the ribosome like a computer tape. The amino acid building blocks, that's the small glowing red molecules, are carried into the ribosome attached to specific transfer RNAs. That's the larger green molecules also referred to as tRNA. The small subunit of the ribosome positions the mRNA so that it can be read in groups of three letters known as a codon. Each codon on the mRNA matches a corresponding anticodon on the base of a transfer RNA molecule. The larger subunit of the ribosome removes each amino acid and joins it onto the growing protein chain. As the mRNA is ratcheted through the ribosome, the mRNA sequence is translated into an amino acid sequence. There are three locations inside the ribosome, designated the A site, the P site, and the E site. The addition of each amino acid is a three-step cycle. First, the tRNA enters the ribosome at the A site and is tested for a codon-anticodon match with the mRNA. Next, provided there is a correct match, the tRNA is shifted to the P site and the amino acid it carries is added to the end of the amino acid chain. The mRNA is also ratcheted on three nucleotides or one codon. Thirdly, the spent tRNA is moved to the E site and then ejected from the ribosome to be recycled. As the protein synthesis proceeds, the finished chain emerges from the ribosome. It folds up into a precise shape determined by the exact order of amino acids. Thus, the central dogma explains how the four-letter DNA code is, quite literally, turned into flesh and blood.